Israel from uh, from one stage to another as they enter the promised land. But before that, we will be reading Romans chapter 4, verse 21. Romans chapter 4, verse 21, where it says here, the Apostle Paul was writing here, and he was talking about Abraham. Remember when Abraham was instructed by the Lord, he has waited for so long for a child from God. And then after so many years, when he was already in his old age, the Lord fulfilled that promise and gave them uh, Isaac. And then for that, it was, it was already a joy for both uh, Abraham and Sarah to have received the fulfillment of the promise. But one day the Lord spoke to Abraham and told him to bring his son Isaac to the mountain to sacrifice him to the Lord. The word of God did not say anything about Abraham protesting or Abraham even questioning what God's motives were. Like, you gave me this blessing and now you're taking it away from me. No, the, the, the Bible never recorded anything about that. But Abraham obeyed. Abraham obeyed because he believed in God. Abraham obeyed because he believed that God is able. God is able to fulfill his promise. And God is able to, even if Isaac were to die, God is able to raise him up from the dead and bring him back and give him back to Abraham. But in Romans chapter 4 verse 21, it says here, He, meaning Abraham, was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever He promises. Amen. God is able to do whatever He promises. Praise the Lord. Have you received a promise from the Lord through His Word? Hold on to it. Because God is able to fulfill Amen. His promises. Have you, are you still holding on to a, a, a verse? A verse that you claim as a promise from the Lord. And maybe it has taken days. Maybe it has taken weeks. Maybe it has taken months. It, maybe it has even taken years. Or even a decade. And you are still holding on to it. Remember that God who made the promise to Abraham and Abraham waited for many years, but ultimately God fulfilled his promise. The Lord is telling us today that he is able to do whatever he promises. The word of God says that God is not a man that he should lie. We can rely on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Bringing us back to the, the, the message that I shared uh, a few weeks ago about the, 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 the promises of God, about the five checks that the Lord has given us. He has given us, hallelujah, the, 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 the check of His presence, the promise of His presence. He has given us the promise of His provisions, the promise of His power. He has given us the promise of His eternal love, His perpetual love. And the promise of the power to persevere. To persevere. To keep on going no matter how hard the life may throw at us. The things that life may throw at us. We will, we will be able to persevere because the Lord is the one who gives us the strength. Praise Amen. God. And last week Pastor Mark shared about to us about giving. And the, the reason why the Lord is challenging us to give. The, the reason why the Lord is telling us to prove Him is because God does not want you to miss out on the blessing. 
God wants you to be blessed and God wants you to experience His power. And He is telling you to test Him and try Him so that you can experience the blessing of the Lord in your life. So what one thing that we should remember today, God is able to do whatever He promises. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shall we just bow down and our heads and ask for the Lord's blessing? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence today. As you have said, when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in our midst, Lord. And Father, we believe that you are here with us. We pray that you will speak to us. We pray, O oh God, that only your name will be lifted up. I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that you will hide me behind your cross, that only the name, the name above all names, only Jesus will be glorified today. We thank you, O oh God, and we give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Is there anyone here who disagrees that life can be tough? Life can be tough, right? Yes. Life can be tough. We live in a world where the enemy, the devil, the thief does his best to kill, to steal, and to destroy. We see that. We watch the, the, we watch the news. We watch things happening around us. And we see the enemy at work. He is trying to destroy. He is trying to steal. He is trying. He is killing. And that is what he has done. That's the Lord Jesus himself said so. Our status as the children of God does not exempt us from hardships, we also go through tough times in life. Believers struggle with the same temptations. True? Yeah. Believers struggle with the same temptations. Believers also face the same diseases. That's why every Friday when we when we pray, we hear people, we hear of people asking for prayer because someone or they themselves have, are facing cancer or facing some, some serious disease or facing hardships. We pray because we know that in this life, in this world, there are tribulations, there are trials, there are hardships. That's why we pray. Believers face the same diseases, face the same hardships, they face the same tough bosses, and believers live in the same economic conditions as everyone else. Don't think that just because you're a Christian, you will never experience hardship. Because the Lord Himself said that in this world you shall have tribulations, you shall have hardships. But there is our word, there is a word of hope. We may not be exempt from the problems, but the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible says that we have the resources. To carry us through Amen. this this problem, the, the Word of God tells us that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that is working in us. According to the power that is working in us, Hallelujah! So there is already a power working in us, in you and me. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then the whole, then the God sends His Holy Spirit into us, and it is that power that is working in you and me, so that we can be overcomers, so that we can persevere. That's what I remember. What I refer to as the black check of perseverance. We can persevere because of the Holy Spirit that is working in you and me. It is not willpower alone. No. But it is the power of God that is helping us, the power of God that is strengthening us to overcome, to keep on going, to keep on holding to the promise, to keep on waking up in the morning and say and facing the day. We will be able to face the day and even today, maybe this morning you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you don't feel like going to church. But now you hear this Yes, you had the power, and then the next day, you don't feel like getting up, but then the Lord is there to strengthen us so that we can get up and face our day, face our week, face our month, face every day in the power of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all that we ask or think. Maybe we are thinking, okay, will I make it today? Yes, God is able to help you beyond what you think. Because there is that power that works in us. The power of God. Hallelujah. So today we go to the book of Joshua, reading the story of God's people who were given the command to go into the promised land and to take possession of it. And here we find lessons and principles for moving into our promised land. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not only the Israelites who were given a promised land. God has given you and me. He has a plan for you and me. Amen. And His plans for you and me are the best. He, he, he wants to bless you. He does, not want, he, does not want us, he does not want to curse you. He wants to bless you. Amen. And God wants you to move into that promise, into that, into that area of, of the fulfillment of God's promise of spirit-filled living. In the third and fourth chapters we, of Joshua, we come to the place where Joshua was commanded to lead the people into Canaan. Now that was a big pressure. Because Moses was already gone. Moses had been leading the people for 40 years in the wilderness after the Lord commanded them to go. But they doubted. They believed the, the, poll, the report of the 10 other spies. They, they rebelled against God. They did not believe God. What should have been a 40-day trip became a 40-year trip. Because they doubted. They doubted the promise of God. Which brings us back to what I quoted earlier, Romans 4.21. God is able to do whatever He promises. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the Lord, this time, there was this new generation. The new generation of Israelites. The old generation that doubted. The old generation that complained. The old generation that did not believe God. They were already gone. And now here is a new generation. And now they were going to enter the promised land. The Lord told Joshua, go. It was a great command. This was a great opportunity except for one thing. They were going to go into the promised land. But here was this Jordan River. The Jordan River at many times can be shallow. But there, this, that, that, the, the, the funny thing is, the Lord shows a time when the Jordan was overflowing. It was not just a shallow stream. It was really flooding. And the currents were strong. And, it was, and, and then you have a, a million people crossing along with the, with the equipment, with the goats and the cows and all those things. And you were going to cross and conquer. So they were ready except that they had this obstacle before them. A river that was blocking their way. So what would Joshua do? How could he obey? And how could he move forward? And perhaps the Lord has given us a promise. Or the Lord has given you a command. The Lord is leading you into something, into a new direction. And maybe you have this river in front of you. Maybe someone is telling you, unless you do this, you will never make it. Unless you do this, you will never cross. Unless you do this, you can never take the first step. Unless you have this, you will never move forward. What would we do? This Bible story has a lot of lessons of encouragement for you and me. And here is the basic principle that we need to take home today. And that basic principle is our impossibilities can become God's opportunities. Amen. Our impossibilities can become God's opportunities. What may seem impossible for you is an opportunity for God to show His power, to show His mighty hand in our lives. And we have a basis for that. There's a, we have a foundation for that statement. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. The Lord said, when, when the apostles asked Him, how is it possible? Because this was the time when 
the rich young man came to the Lord and he said that, oh, I want to, how, what must I do to, to inherit eternal life? And the Lord told him, you must do this, do that. And, the, and then the young man said, I have done all these things. And then the Lord looked at him and said, one thing you need, sell everything you have and give it to the poor and then go and follow me. And of course, we know what happened. The young man, he went away. He was sad because he was so rich. And the Lord said, it is easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And we know what a needle is. We know how small that hole is, the eye. So imagine a camel going through the eye of a needle. Of course, the Lord was telling that figuratively that it's easier. That can be, it's as easy as that. But what does the Lord mean by that? And that's why the, the apostles said, this is impossible. How can that, how can that be possible? Yes. And then the Lord said, with man, it is impossible. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible. That's why I'm saying today, what we need to understand this principle, our impossibilities can become God's opportunities. Maybe you are facing an impossible situation right now. In your eyes, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. When I went to, uh, whenever we travel, and then uh, we pass over, when, when we are already near Switzerland, we see, we know we are already Swiss in, near Switzerland because we see those huge mountains that are rising, the mountain peaks rising above the clouds. And they seem so small. They seem so, yeah, they, like, you can easily look down at them because we're on top of, we're, we're in the plain. But if we were at the bottom of the mountain and then looking up at the mountain, it, it is huge in our sight. But when we are on the plain, it seems so small. Yeah. And that's how it is. We may be facing mountains in our lives, but from God's point of view, it is small. It is small. That's why with us, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Joshua chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. But first, we will we will be focusing on the first four verses first. Uh, Joshua chapter three, verses one to four. Early in the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Akasha Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River, where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people: When you see the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. Move up from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about half a mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the ark. Make sure that you don't come any closer. Make sure that you don't come any closer. So, what does this mean? The Lord declared, now is the time for occupation. Now is the time for you to move forward. But first, there's a transition. They were comfortably living on this side in the wilderness. They have been moving around and around. They were already used to that lifestyle. And now the Lord is telling them, it's time for you to end this kind of lifestyle. It's time for you to move to another lifestyle. It's time for you to cross the river. No longer just lazing around. No longer just doing these things. But now it's time for you to fight. It's time for you to conquer. It's time for you to face your enemies. It's time for you to face your challenges. And of course, no one likes challenges. No one likes, I don't like, no one likes hardships. No. And as much as possible, if we can escape it, if we can run away from it, we will try. But now, in the case of the Israelites, the Lord is telling them, now is the time. And this is a transition. They were confronted with a moment of choice 
that would change Israel from a wandering nation to a nation, to a properly settled nation. From a people living in hope of a promise to a people living in possession of that promise. So the crossing over is much more than moving from one area to another. It means it is a time of commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And commitment means you don't just you don't just say, okay, yes, Lord, but you have to act on that decision. You have to act on that choice. It is a time of ending one era and entering and entering another. It is definitely a, a, a period of uncertainty because they were already used to living in the wilderness. They know that the next day there will be manna. They don't have to go out and uh, well, like what we do on Saturday morning. What will we eat on this morning? I don't know. It's up to you. So I have to go out and then buy something. But in their case, they don't have... The manna is already waiting for them and they just need to pick it. The Lord was providing for them. But now it will be a different... A, a different era. It will be times of uncertainty. On the other side of the river, there are walled cities waiting for them. There will be armies defending against them, and even the giants who will be fighting against them. Forty years before, Israel was presented with the opportunity, but they doubted, they questioned God, they they, they did not believe God. That's why their, their period, their, their travel, which was supposed to be only a few days, became 40 years. But this time, with the new generation, Joshua was ready to move them forward. Amen. The Lord has commanded them, and Moses was no longer around. Mm. It was time for them to move forward with a new leader. And if we would realize... The promises of God in our lives, the very first thing that you and I must be ready to do so is to move ahead obediently mm -hmm. into transitions. Mm -hmm. There are people who move into that transition, but in their hearts they are not fully obedient. Mm -hmm. Like there are people who have to be kicked mm -hmm. into moving forward. <laughs> But God does not want us to obey by being forced to do so. Yes. God wants us to obey with our whole heart. Amen. We obey even when there is uncertainty that comes with the change. Transitions can even become stressful. If you have been transferred from this country to another country, it can be stressful. From one place to another, even changing jobs can be stressful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even being in another place with new people can be stressful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. When Brother Ahmed came with his son Myron, I think he was stressed because like, these people are new. I don't know these people. And then he started crying because I don't know you. It can be stressful. Mm. So even children can experience stress. <laughs> I know that because yes. the first time I, I, I was in, in, a, in a classroom, I, the children were new, the faces were new, it's as if they know each other and I don't know anyone. It was already stressful. That's why coming to class is uh, <laughs> sometimes, it can be, yes, it can be challenging. I remember my daughter, the first time I brought her, I, I saw <laughs> boys really screaming and clinging on to the legs of their fathers as if it's going to be the end of the world because it's like they don't want to. They don't want to deal with the change. But all of us must deal with change. Amen. All of us must deal with transitions in life. Amen. And it is un unavoidable. Mm. It is unavoidable. Change will come. Sure. Tell the person next to you, you cannot avoid change. You cannot avoid change. It will come. But how you experience it will be your decision, your choice, your attitude. Our reaction will be, we have a choice to make. How will we respond to it? How, how will, what will our attitudes be? 
when we face these transitions. I remember what I mentioned before, this was some time ago, but it re I was reminded of it again. Who you are today mm. is the result of your decisions yesterday. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And who you will be tomorrow mm. will be the result of your decisions today. Yes. So, yes, maybe you are here right now, your, your situation, you don't like it, but that was the result of your choices in the past. Mm -hmm. But who you want to be tomorrow, no. you can change that. You, 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 you have the power. No, you, have, you have the choice. What choices you make today will be the result, will result in who you will be tomorrow. So you have to make the right choices. And there are a lot of transitions. You know, transitions from childhood to teen years. There are transitions from teen to career and marriage. Mm. Many changes yes. from couple to family and then maybe after a decade or two decades or so, you, you're back to being a couple because the children will have moved out, they will have married or, or then you have the midlife transition. Mm. That's why they call it the midlife crisis. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Then preparing for the end of life, accepting our mortality. You, know, you realize, especially for me, my wife and I, we are nearing our 60s. We realize whew, there are many things that we thought that are very essential, but now we look at them and we see mm. they're not that important. Mm. Even yesterday, we were in, uh, in um, where did we go? To Emmaus. Uh, Emmaus. We, we purchased this small piece of furniture, which, of course, you know, Emmaus is known for uh, selling uh, those second-hand items. Second-hand items, and these items, the, maybe the first time they were purchased by the owners, the owners were so happy to have purchased them, and they paid a good price. But now we get them second-hand. We just, we just got them for a good price, 30 francs. I just sprayed something to make it shiny, wiped it, and it's there in one corner. Yeah. What may seem so valuable to someone yesterday, for us it's cheap today. Yeah. So there are you know, transitions. Mm -hmm. Some of these transitions are driven by time. Mm -hmm. It's true. Others by experience. But the fact is, transitions or change is unavoidable. Mm -hmm. But the question is, will we withdraw in fear or will we will we choose to move forward in confidence mm. God in the same way as he called Joshua and the Israelites to move forward and not to withdraw he is telling us to move forward to move forward into that new era in your life into that new a phase in your life, God is calling you to move into that new stage. Because what God is leading you into, He has also promised us, just like what I shared last time, that His presence will always be with us. Yeah. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And our text today helps us to prepare for crossings, for transitions in life by showing us a pattern of action. There is a pattern that, of action that we can uh, observe here, and it is a pattern that we should observe or, or uh, do in our lives. So the first pattern that we need to do is we need to follow. Mm. When God leads, yep. we need to follow. Yes. When, when the commander tells us to charge, <laughs> we charge. <laughs> you don't see a commander charging by himself and then looking for, and then the, the, his men are saying, bye. We'll see you in the afterlife. No, no. When the leader says go, we need to follow. Yes. So Joshua focused the attention of the Israelites on the Ark of the Covenant. We know the Ark of the Covenant. It's that 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 box that was uh, uh, gilded by gold. It is the visible symbol of the presence of the Lord among the people of Israel. Usually, the whole the 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 Ark is 
stays in the in that area inside that tent called the holy of the holiest of holies in the center of the tab tabernacle of worship and only the high priest during that time can enter the holiest of holies once a year but here we see here uh, Joshua ordered the people to focus on the presence of the Lord for he is the one who will lead us in to Canaan he is the one who will lead us so as we prepare as we get ready for the transitions we must be centered on the presence of the Lord Amen. the Ark of the Covenant is no longer here mm -hmm. but the, the, the Word of God says that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior his Holy Spirit dwells in you Amen. and me Amen. so his Holy Spirit dwells in you and me his presence is there yes. so even if you are by yourself you are not alone mm -hmm. Because the presence of the Lord is in you. The presence of the Lord is with you. Amen. We have the Spirit of the Lord in our hearts. And Amen. God has a plan. A way for us to make it through that difficulty. But the question is, will we humbly obey? Mm. Will we humbly let Him lead? Let Him lead us into that stage in our life. Mm. Let me tell you, the, the Lord knows how to reach that loved one. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have been praying for this loved one or loved ones in your life. They have not yet given their lives to the Lord, but and they are trying to resist it. But the Lord knows the way to reach that person. Amen. 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 For young people, He knows how uncertain you may feel about the future. Mm -hmm. But the Lord knows. Amen. He holds your future. Amen. And He will lead you to the right education. He will lead you to the right decision. He will lead you to the right person, to the right lifetime partner. He will lead you. He will take care of it. I mean, for my wife and I, we have been said, I mean, she, she was in Switzerland, I was in the Philippines. We haven't seen each other for three years. But the Lord brought us together again. I mean, I can say, if the Lord can make that way, He can do the same thing for you. So don't worry about it. Amen. He knows the way for you to cope with that, with that sickness. Even using it to create intimacy with Himself. No. The Lord knows. The Lord has plans for you and me. He has a plan for the second. Even for those who are reaching their middle age. He has a plan for the second half of your life. So don't think... Uh, Everything is over. No, God has a plan. Remember, he called Abraham. How old was Abraham when God called him? So don't think that maybe you're already in this stage, uh, like for, for me and my wife, nearing 60s. But don't think that, oh, uh, I'll just sit here and relax and because I'm already retired. No, God is not yet finished with you. Hallelujah. Even in your marriage, as you're preparing for the challenges of parenting, or as you move into that stage of the emptiness, God is preparing everything. He has plans for you. He is an eternal God, and He knows the day when you will come back to Him. But even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not fear. Hallelujah. For He is with us. So whatever is worrying you right now, Focus on the Lord. Bring Amen. it to Him. Amen. Focus on His presence and be ready to be obedient to Him. So, the first thing that we need to understand, we need to follow. Amen. The second thing is we need to consecrate. Amen. Yes. We need to consecrate. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse, uh, verse 5 of Joshua chapter 3, then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you, mm -hmm. hallelujah, purify yourself. So the Israelites were directed to get their hearts ready by renewing their understanding of mm -hmm. their position as the people of God. Let us move into a state of a high consciousness Amen. of the Lord's law, of the, of the commandment of God. Amen. The command to consecrate or to purify means to observe special dietary restrictions, mm -hmm. To abstain from drinking wine and those things. Such a command has been given before in Mount Sinai in preparation for the giving of the law. 
The Bible describes believers as the chosen people of God, as a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's what uh, the Apostle Peter wrote in his epistle. And it is clear that our holiness is not earned or it is not merited. We don't deserve it. It was given to us. It was by grace. It is We, we don't create holiness. No. No. It is the word of God in us. And yet we are always called to make the choice to be God's people. Every day. Amen. Even when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that comes to our mind. We need to make that choice whether to entertain that wrong thought or to entertain the thought that comes from the Lord. Amen. Whether to pick up our Bible, whether to pick up our smartphone, Amen. whether to switch from the smartphone Bible or to Facebook. Mm. You know, it's our choice. It's our choice. Yes. 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 You're not because you know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a moment you open your, your smartphone. Notifications. So and so like your post. Instagram. So and so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I know that. <laughs> but God always calls us to make the choice to be, to belong to Him, to live in awareness of His presence, to avoid unworthy actions that could diminish the reputation of God or to offend Him. And so from our text, it shows us that in times of transition, we need to become even more conscious mm. of God's presence. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If there's, if, if God is leading you to make a, a, a big decision in your life, all the more that we need to be conscious, all the more that we need to cling to Him, mm -hmm. all the more that we need to hold on to His promises. God moves among people who are walking in holiness. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, Brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that He will accept. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect His will really is. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So when we make a commitment, uh, when we renew our commitment, it means a new consecration. We give our lives to the Lord. We say, Lord, I offer my life to you. But then the next day, we, we, we make the same thing. We need to constantly be aware that we need to surrender our lives to the Lord, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every day. Amen. Consecrating is a way of making a new declaration mm. of dependence mm. on God. Oh, we cannot do it on our own. Amen. We cannot do it on our own. We, we are only saved by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the first thing is we need to follow. The second thing is we need to consecrate, to dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Amen. And once we have dedicated ourselves to the Lord, we tell the Lord, Lord, I am ready. And we need to move out. That's right. <laughs> Don't say, Lord, I am ready. <laughs> Lord, I'm ready. <laughs> Lord, I'm ready. <laughs> but you're not moving. <laughs> you're like a fully, uh, you're, you're like a, 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 a car with a full tank. And you're just... Vroom, 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 but you're on neutral. You're just using up the, the, the fuel, but you're not moving forward. Oh, Lord. The Lord, the Lord put that this. What's the what's the largest engine? V8? I don't know. Yeah, the 1612. You have this large engine in your car, but you're keeping neutral. You're not moving forward. God has given us the power, but unless we move forward, nothing will happen. Thank you. We need to move out. The day for stepping out has already arrived. The Israelites have already 
They, they have already struck their tents. They have already folded up their tents. They are ready. The, the Ark of the Covenant is moving forward. The Levites are bringing it. They're moving. They're, they need to enter. They need to cross the Jordan River. Of course, that time, of the, the, the waters were really raging. The, 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 it was, there was a huge flood. And the, the, and the current was really strong. And perhaps the, the Levites themselves were saying, are we going to go in or not? <laughs> Maybe they were just trying to look at each other and see if the other one will move forward or not. So the procession begins. Imagine like a million pair of feet moving forward, going. It's like being in a crowd. When we were in Dubai in January, when... There was a lot of people in the mall and it's like we were just going, we were, we were just being pushed by the people. <laughs> we cannot stop, we have to move forward, otherwise we will bother the people behind us. So everyone was moving forward. I'm sure the Levites, they wanted to stop, but the people were pushing them forward and they need to enter. They need to go into the water. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What would, have, what would it have been like for the priests at the front of the group? You are walking towards a river. There was no bridge. There was no way across. If you move forward, you will surely drown. But then the Lord commands us to move forward. So step into the water. But it was not until their feet touched the water's edge that the Lord stopped the flow. If you want to see the miracle of God in your life, you need to step into the water. It's the same way what we heard last Sunday. If you want to see the blessing of God into your life, you need to obey God's command. You need to make a decision. You need to make the, the step. There are many people who are always preparing, but who never really took the step. And I refer, of course, not to other... Uh, other people, but also particularly here in church about believers. They, they say, oh, I want to be in the ministry. Mm. But they never do. They never do. That's why this afternoon, after the service, we will show you we have a lot of ministries. And if you want to participate, please do so. So now is the time to step into the water. Transitions require a moment of decision. You are ready. You have made all preparations on the line. It's time for you to move out. To move out. There is always this principle to be aware of. There is always this principle that we need to be aware. Of, and the principle is this. The greater the potential for the reward that is created by our choice the greater the risk. So a bigger reward means you need to make a bigger risk. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to see a bigger reward? Bigger risk. Then you may have to change, <laughs> face a bigger <laughs> risk. Yes. If we are really risking, mm -hmm. if we are really following the presence of the Lord and living a life of consecration, then we know that there will be a bigger reward. The Israelites were entering the promised land under God's guidance. They had all the promises written down. They had all they had they all have it in their memory, in their hearts. But they still need to go and possess the land. The Lord promised them, I will give you this land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, Lord, thank you. Yes, Lord, you are good. But you are still on the other side of the river. The Lord has promised you blessings and you receive it. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, thank you, thank you. And you're jumping with joy. But you have not taken the step. Remember that last Sunday. The Lord will bless. Amen. And we were so blessed by that message. But what was the step? What was the command? Yeah. When we were hearing, yes, the Lord will bless, we were saying, Amen, yes, Lord, yes, yes. But when we heard the word, give, 
Yeah, I remember that illustration about that person who said, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. they were singing the song, I surrender all the Lord says, give to me, in Jesus' name, I am good. The greater the reward, the greater the risk. Yes. And the Lord is not asking us to give all. He is giving, asking us to give yes. just a portion. But now the Lord is telling us, if you want to see more blessings in your life, not only give, but obey. First of all, the heart to obey, to take the first step. Give of whatever the Lord has, you have been entrusted by the Lord with a talent, give it to the Lord. Amen. There comes a moment to commit to the process. And for many of us, the moment is now. Mm. It's today. Amen. It's not tomorrow. Amen. Don't say, Lord, uh, send the others, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is in those moments that we will discover who our God is. That we will discover how deep is His love for you and me. Amen. If we are living in the promises of God, we can step ahead knowing that the Lord will make a way. Hallelujah. Let us hold on to the, promise of, the promises of the Lord and let us cross over. The source of our true confidence is in this wonderful passage in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord started a good work in you and me. And He is faithful to complete it. And the prophet Isaiah also tells us in Isaiah 43 verse 2. You feel like you're going through deep waters? This is what the Lord tells you. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Hallelujah. That's a beautiful promise. The Lord is with us. The Lord will never leave us. The Lord will not forsake us. And uh, as a final word, let's look at one, one more time at our text today. Joshua chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Joshua chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. It says here, so Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, this was after they had already crossed uh, the Jordan River. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan, because that time the Jordan was still dried up. The, the Lord had stopped the flow of the water. So they walked on dry land in the same way. This was God showing the Israelites, the, the new generation, that just as the Lord had been with Moses when they walked on dry ground through the Red Sea, the Lord is also with Joshua when they walk on dry ground through the Jordan River. Go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulder. Twelve stones in all, one for each of the twelve tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? And you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. So the men did as Joshua had commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the place where they camped for the night and constructed the memorial there. Joshua also set up another pile of 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan at the place where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing, and they are there to this day. Hallelujah. Praise God. It is a stone of memorial. So, 
We need to follow. Mm -hmm. We need to consecrate. Mm -hmm. We need to move out. And once we have moved out, and after we have moved out, we need to memorialize mm -hmm. the work of God. Mm -hmm. We need to remember mm -hmm. the work of God. We need to establish memorials mm -hmm. of those special times when God provided, when God saved, when God delivered, when God answered our prayers. So not the, so that we can live in the past, no. no. But so that the miracles of yesterday mm. can strengthen the foundation of our faith. Amen. 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 When we look back, we remember, the Lord has helped me. Mm. The Lord has helped me in the past. He will also help me yes. today. Yes. And He will help me in the future. Amen. Yeah. Memorials can build our confidence in what God can do. Mm -hmm. That's why I remember when, when Sis Alji shared to us about what she has experienced. The Lord has provided for them, for her. And we have heard other testimonies how the Lord has brought, has seen them through. Mm -hmm. These are things that we need to remember. These are things that we need to recall. How God has saved. How God has provided. And the Lord can do the same thing for you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Of course, it doesn't mean that we need to take physical stones and build a physical memorial. No. When we say memorializing, you can take time to make memorials by keeping a prayer journal. Yes. Amen. You have a look. Right. These are the things I prayed for. Yes. And then you check them. <laughs> when when Sister Alji mentioned about when we prayed with her last August and how the Lord provided for her and what she received was dating back to August. We prayed in August. The Lord provided in February. Mm -hmm. But it already started in August. And the Lord will remember. And the Lord is faithful to His promise. So when you pray today, and it hasn't yet arrived. Mm. But when it comes, you will remember, oh, it all started when I prayed mm -hmm. that day, Amen. that moment. Yes. Remember what Daniel was told by the angel Gabriel? Mm -hmm. When, when, when they, uh, Gabriel told him, the day you pray, the Lord already sent me. Yeah. So don't think that God has forgotten you. Hallelujah. The Lord remembers. So when you pray, you have a prayer item, listen down. And when you receive the, the answer, Look back and see Amen. what the Lord has done. Amen. So keep a prayer journal. Amen. Not only that, like I said, don't keep it to yourself. Tell others. Amen. Share your testimony. Amen. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Amen. And if you have uh, like a get-togethers, you have holiday meals, take time to remember those points, those areas, and give thanks once again to God. Always give thanks to the Lord. Remember what, what David said? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. He is the one who healed us. He has forgiven us. He is the one who has saved us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. In closing, like I said earlier, transitions will come, changes will come. They are inevitable. They are not, you cannot avoid them. Life is not static. It's always moving. Always moving. And God is pointing you towards tomorrow. Amen. And sometimes all we see is like, that's too tough. That's impossible. But remember that in that impossibility, there is an opportunity for God to show us His power. Hallelujah. Amen. It may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible, and He can show His mighty power even in the impossible. Yes. So as we face our crossings, as we face our, our maybe crossroads in life, in transitions, let us take the lesson once again from Joshua. We need to, first of all, follow. Focus on where God, by the Spirit, is leading you. The second thing is consecrate our lives. Renew our commitment to Him. And then third, as we do that, let us move out. We should not go just halfway. Well, we should go all the way towards the challenge and let us give it 
Let us not give in to the temptation to quit. Mm -hmm. The Lord is the one. If you feel like quitting, if you feel like giving up, hold on to the Lord. He is the one who started the good work in you. Amen. He is faithful to complete it. Amen. And once it has been done, once the Lord has finished His work, remember, memorialize it. Remember the former victories and build our faith in the Lord who is at work in us today. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads and close our eyes. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the life of Joshua. We thank you, Lord God, that you have called him to take over as the leader of that nation whom you brought into the promised land and you have shown that you are the God who is faithful and true to your promise. But now, Lord God, we are here. We are listening to your word. We have heard what you have commanded us to do. And Lord, we need to follow. We need to follow and as we follow you, we will keep our eyes on you. You said in your word through your servant Paul, fix your eyes on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Help us, O Lord God. We cannot do it now, but help us to fix our eyes on you, to not let go, to hold on to your promise, to renew our commitment to you, O Lord God. And as we renew our commitment to you, as we obey, Lord, to move forward. And may we never forget. May we always remember and may we command our souls to bless you and to forget not, to not forget all the benefits that we have received, Lord. So that you will bring us from glory to glory, from transition to another transition, from, from, from better to being more better, Lord God. From, uh, from one level of, uh, of our walk to another higher level. Bring us, O oh Lord God. Continue the work that you have started in us, O oh Lord God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let us take this time to just continue in the presence of the Lord. And if there is, if you have a need, if you are at this moment facing a challenge which seems insurmountable, you are facing a mountain. Or maybe you are at a crossroad and you have uh, you are you have hesitations, you have doubts, you have fears about what the future may hold. Remember what the word has told us today. The Lord is with you. Amen. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If there is any doubt, any fear, any uh, any worries, any nervousness, let us fix our eyes on the Lord. Just, what, just like what Joshua commanded his people, focus on the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, you know every heart. You know, Lord God, everything, every thought that is going through everyone's heart, everyone's mind right now. Lord, there are choices to be made. There are decisions that we face. There are mountains to be overcome. There are giants to be felled. Lord, we pray that you will help us. As we fix our eyes on you, Lord God, the mountains become smaller. The giants will shrink. And Lord, the problems, Lord God, will become easier for us. Because it is not by our own power. Because with us it is impossible. But with you all things are possible. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your strength. I pray for strength upon every brother and sister here. I pray for your grace, Lord God. I pray for your wisdom. I pray for, for your love, Lord God. For your, for, for your strength to be upon each of us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And as we move forward, Lord God, we will move forward in faith we will obey O oh god and we will cross that river we will make that decision we will step into the water lord god and as we do so lord god we will never forget what you have done for us 
Bless us, O Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So like what I announced earlier, uh, I'd like to call my... my